Yes, yes, you are audible and we are live. Okay. Should I start? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Sabhi saathiyo ko zindabad. Jan Andolano ka rashtriya samanvaye dwara sanchalit zamini awaz ke charcha satra mein aap sabhi ka swagat hai. जनवरी 2021 से जमीनी आंदोलन और सामाजिक और पर्यावरण न्याय पर हर हफ्ते जमीनी आवाज से चर्चा सत्र का आयोजन किया जा रहा था और अभी भी जारी है लगभग 70 जितने इन चर्चा सत्रों में विभिन्न प्रकार के मुद्दे जो सार्वजनिक महत्वता के हैं उस पर चर्चा हुई है बहुत सारे लोगों ने इसमें भाग भी लिया है देश के कई कोनों से कई सारे लोगों ने इसमें भाग लिया है आज का जो सत्र है कबाड़ी मजदूर श्रमिक अधिकार पर्यावरण और शहर नियोजन के सवाल इस श्रृंखला का तीसरा हिस्सा है और आज की जो आज की चर्चा बढ़ती शहरीकरण व विकास व सतत विकास के ढांचे के संदर्भ में कबाड़ी श्रमिक और कचरा व्यवस्थापन के सवाल इस मुद्दे पर आज हमारे साथी जो जुड़े हैं इस पर आज चर्चा होगी इस चर्चा सत्र को आगे ले जाएंगी लुबना लुबना कागज का सत्र कष्टकारी पंचायत जो महाराष्ट्र से पुणे में है उनके साथ जुड़ी हुई है उनका लाइवलीहुड्स का जो काम है लाइवलीहुड इनिशिएटिव के साथ काम करती है कागज का पत्र जो है कचरा बीनने वाले कूड़ा खरीदार पूरा इकट्ठा करने वाले और इनफॉर्मल रिसाइकल साइकिलर्स के साथ काम करता है इस पूरे ये एक यूनियन है जो 1993 में इसकी शुरुआत हुई थी और 1993 से बहुत सारे लोग विभिन्न प्रकार से जो सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयड कार्यकर्ता है मजदूर है श्रमिक हैं के के पी के पी के साथ जुड़े हुए हैं और ना सिर्फ अपने काम के अलावा विभिन्न प्रकार के जो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन है उस पर भी आवाज उठाते आए हुए हैं तो आज के चर्चा सत्र को लुबना आगे लेकर जाएंगी लुबना और बाकी सभी वक्ताओं का स्वागत है जमीनी आवाज के इस सत्र में लुबना ओवर टू थैंक यू थैंक यू जोना वेलकम एवरी वन टू देशन लाइक जोना सेट टू डे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वेस्ट वर्कर्स issues of labor rights and ecology and urban planning it's the third session in this series today's session uh, is focusing on waste workers and waste management within the context of rapid urbanization and sustainable development to speak on this issue uh, we have four speakers joining us today pinky chandran swapan kumar sinha dunu roy and shibu nayar all the speakers will share their perspectives on the topic we'll then have an audience discussion we'll take questions and before closing we'll allow the speakers to give uh, concluding remarks we'll begin now with the first speaker the first speaker is pinky chandran pinky is an independent researcher author and a community journalist she tracks policy and legal developments on issues related to waste management and its intersection Garbage inspires her to write poetry, and she runs her own blog called Waste Frames. She is the founding member of the Solid Waste Management Roundtable and is a trustee of Hasi Rudala in Bangalore. Today, Pinky will be speaking about what we mean by locating waste pickers, uh, and about dignity of work and the debate hailing from formalization of waste, uh, with special reference to Bangalore and Chennai. Uh, over to you, Pinky. Thank you, Lokna. So. Um... Waste management and people who work in waste is often viewed in a binary framework of clean and dirty, local and global, formal and informal, or pollution and value approach. Given that our cities are in transition and currently are in the race for the cleaner city award, so what do we really mean when we uh, talk about locating waste pickers? Um, historically speaking, uh, uh, SMS, which is Sri Mukti Sangatna in Bombay in the late 80s, KKPKP in Pune in the in the early 90s, and Chintan in Delhi in the early 2000s, have spearheaded mobilization of waste pickers for livelihood development and the need for formal recognition. These organizations were uh, at the forefront of championing the right to, right to identity and recognition of waste workers, the right to waste, right to organizing. 
uh, in the form of collectors, trade unions, cooperative, SHEs, and social enterprises. Uh, they champion right to sorting spaces, which is earmarking infrastructure spaces in the city, right to representation, which included uh, that the government ensure waste pickers and waste picker organizations are consulted and are part of various boards and committees for policy recommendation, right to training, capacity building, and of course, the right to social security. While uh, our policy document, especially the Solid Waste Management Rules 2016, defined waste pickers and other informal waste collectors and mandate that they include they be included and in integrated in the city's uh, waste collection, what do we actually mean by integration and inclusion? Because they too are often used interchangeably. However, they are not the same. Integration means merely acknowledgement of waste pickers and other informal waste collectors and this I say with confidence because uh, I was part of a study in 2018-19, uh, which was released informally in 2020, which looked at about 18 states and waste picker inclusion in the Swatch, uh, perspectives of waste picker inclusion in, in the Swatch Bharat scheme. And uh, uh, one of the most important findings was that I think the, the need to move beyond registering waste pickers and engaging them just in, in, in waste collection to expand the benefits to the entire downstream recycling industry. Because merely co-opting waste pickers in an, in an EPR plan or a city's collection, uh, uh, you know, collection plan threatens their livelihood in earning fair compensation. It lacks opportunity for social mobility, destroys natural markets, criminalizes informal recycling, and also perpetuates inequalities of, uh, you know, by uh, privatization, deepening discrimination and increasing harassment. Inclusion on the other hand means respecting different settings, systems, operations, and the varied groups in the informal uh, waste space, allowing for full participation in policy design and governance that affect their livelihoods. Simply said, it means move beyond register, regulate, and tax to look at improvement in technical capacity, access to finance, upgradation of infrastructure, skill upgradation, and social security. It basically acknowledges that informal economy varies across the country and respects the entrepreneurial nature of work that, that a one size fits all policy will not serve any purpose in achieving the recycling uh, mandate. But that apart, where do waste pickers stand, especially waste pickers and the entire informal recycling cha uh, chain, including the municipal workers stand, especially in shifting uh, priorities. Like I said, in the race to be the cleaner city, or the race to move beyond aspirational districts to progressive districts, or even in the city's allocation of the SWM budget, and within the framework of dignity of work. Because dignity um, has been highly championed, while dignity as a concept is highly contested and debatable, given that it has many interpretations and definitions within the informal uh, based value work chain, uh, and, and the fact that there is heterogeneous, it, it is heterogeneous, it has various intricacies and in, in, intersections, both at the, uh, uh, you know, at, across formalization, privatization, or even hybrid models. And it is important from a well being and welfare perspective. But in the recent years and in recent policy discourses, especially with the rising middle class activism, you will find that uh, uh, that many of them are now advocating for a new nomenclature, which is formalization, viewed from a positive framework um, lens, where waste workers are looked at. If they are employed, then they have all the benefits. Whereas, where if they are in, un, if they are informal, then it is un, unprotective, exploitative. It does not have a proper working condition. It it harms the environment. There is no financial uh, stability, thus perpetuating the whole chain of poverty and this thing. But despite all the elitist approach, like Martha Chen said in, in a World Bank report, informal work is a permanent feature of contemporary economic life. And uh, while I was reading an article uh, by Nicola Banks, uh, where she actually states that, and, and, and the others, she actually states that formality offers state resources, social status, and hence power, but a focus on informality uh, highlights those disadvantaged by their ability, their inability to be formal, but those also advantaged by their ability to be selective, selectively informal. And a uh, case in point is when I was doing this study, I happened to do a series of focus group discussion across different cities, uh, the prominent being Indore, Bombay, Pune, um, 
uh, we also had uh, waste pickers from Panchkula who had come on, come down to Hasrudala, we, uh, Mysore, Patna, Delhi. And the most important thing was what, what, the, what the articulation was, the fact that they were able to um, pick waste or they were able to, to um, you know, take up to this as and when they wanted to. So focusing on informality, uh, what the authors say, is as a site of critical uh, analysis, highlights how opportunities are opened or closed and helps us understand how the process underpin, uh, underpins the social, economic, or political inequality. Um, now, when I talk about Bangalore and Chennai, Bangalore, for instance, has been a front runner with waste picker inclusion. And, um, I, and, and even though I, I represent Hasrudala, I must, I also take pride in the fact that uh, in the early um, 2010, the Lok Adalat Act 2010-11, Lok Adalat actually mandated the municipality to register waste pickers much before the SWM 2016 rules came about. And Bangalore has been a trailblazer in that. It also looked at uh, including waste pickers in the dry waste collection center scheme. However, right now, as I speak today, this whole system, and, and even though the High Court, the Karnataka High Court mandated inclusion of waste pickers and access to waste, the entire chain of operation seems to be a little bit of, uh, seems to be under threat because now the municipality is considering going back to a system which allows for a single uh, vehicle picking up all streams of waste, where in 2017, the rules very clearly stated the fact that, um, you know, waste pickers would collect dry waste uh, through the dry waste collection centers. Having said that, I have been looking at the budget documents of both Bangalore and Chennai. With Chennai, what I found was because of privatization of 14 zones, even though Chennai is moving towards decentralized waste management facilities, and they have set up different kinds of infrastructure for decentralized waste management facilities, waste pickers have been left in the lurch. Last week, I happened to visit Siddhi Pet in Andhra Pradesh, which has been again at the forefront uh, in terms of championing um, or taking their uh, you know, steps towards zero waste wards uh, in the city. And unfortunately, there has been absolutely no uh, identification of waste pickers. So with that, if I look at even the SDG index uh, dashboard 2020-21, uh, which Niti Aayog has just put out, it talks about multi-stakeholder partnerships and it is it hails multi-stakeholder partnerships as a cornerstone of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development and sustainable development goals and um, and and the first thing that i looked about is um, you know who are the top performing states how are they looking at things even though this this particular guide document is there how are we as as waste picker or uh, you know informal waste workers advocate or um, somebody who's in the space of advocating for livelihoods and, and dignity of work, how are we looking at this whole SDG toolkit? If you look at no poverty, for instance, poverty, as we know, cannot be viewed only from an income perspective. You have to look at it at multidimensional perspective. But when I read the very first chapter of Sonia Rai's Mountain Tales, Love Loss in the Municipality of Castaway Belongings, um, I'm just reading from the chapter, it says, Farzana Ali Sheikh rummaged on a mountain clearing on a hot April afternoon. The sun warmed her head and made lurid colors swim in her eyes. The smell of rotting prawns wafted from the mountains. She jabbed her long garbage fork to push aside translucent, uh, translucent fish scales, crackling prawns shells, entrails and animal dung, and scooped up the broken glass jars that just poured out of the clearing. Her eyes were trained to spot plastic bottles, wire, glass, German silver, um, you know, or cloth scraps. She snapped up her pickings before others could get to them. So when you're looking at no poverty, what are we really talking about? What about, you know, landfills are actually a symptom that there is something wrong with the cities. And I don't think so any city can claim to be um, a zero dump yard. So the very first underlying thing about no poverty is is landfills and la landfills are also symptomatic of the fact that SWM rules are not going as per what they need to be, uh, uh, you know, looking at. And uh, the whole SDG index also talks about a new collaborative action and partnership, a convening of multiple organizations with social capital 
and the need to bring together complementary and diverse resources and a need for legitimacy and knowledge. So it also acknowledges the fact that SDGs in which India performs at the lowest is one, two, and five, which is no poverty, um, zero hunger, and gender equality. And we all know that waste work is very gendered in its approach. And relatively low, uh, what, what they talk about where India fares relatively low is SDG 3, 4, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 16, which is um, uh, health, education, uh, reducing inequalities, uh, decent work, sustainable cities, sustainable uh, you know, consumption and production, climate change, and strong institutions. So um, if I look at goal eight, it says Himachal Pradesh and Chandigarh are the top performing, um, are the front runners and in which it talks about banking. But do we have any data of how many waste pickers really have access to banking? When you talk about goal eight, which is reduced inequalities, we talk about inner income inequality. Again, is there any data in the state about, in the, in the country about what are the earnings of waste pickers in comparison to other streams of work? And from a city, whole city perspective, but where is the full-fledged database itself? In quest, the, the, whole, the question is also where's the whole database? You look at goal 11, which is sustainable cities, it says 97% 90, wards have 100% door-to-door collection, 78% um, wards have 100% source segregation, 68% uh, of MSW gets pr uh, processed. But in 2019, I, and, and of course, Punjab and Goa are the top performing thing. I remember very vividly when we went for an interview in Goa, where uh, Nalini and I, Nalini Shekhar from Hasrudala and I had gone as part of another study, which was, um, uh, you know, which was leaving no trace, where we were looking at different uh, streams of, of uh, you know, uh, sustainable organizations in this particular space, we went and visited Goa. Now, what we were told was, they were allowing waste pickers to go pick waste, before the municipality van goes and collects. Now, is that enough? Is that enough that they are allowed to pick waste? And then it says Punjab is also the front runner. Now in 2019, the article from Times of India basically states that there is a consortium of 35 brands, owners of plastic packaging, and they were going to clean up about 3,500 metric tons of plastic waste from seven cities of Punjab, which was Amritsar, Patiala, Batinda, Mohali, Rupar, uh, Navashankar and, um, and uh, Munak. Now, uh, and it, it, the consortium was Pan Punjab Plastic Waste Management Society, which was basically to abide by the EPR rules. And the PCP member in the article states that while they were looking at regulating plastic waste, they have also asked brand owners to contribute to welfare of children of waste pickers. The question is, is that enough? SDG 12 talks about, uh, which this recent report states that 2.5 tons of plastic waste per annum is generated per thousand population and the front runner being Tripura. And, um, but if you look at the action taken report submitted to the NGT by, the, uh, uh, by Tripura state, the, uh, it very clearly says that the Agartala Municipal Corporation has set up an SWM plant with sanitary landfill in, um, Devendra Chandranagar, and when you read the whole document, it says that there is a plastic, pl uh, plastic plant and an eco-brick plant attached to the SWM plant, in which all types of plastic waste collected and transported is converted into fine granules, which are further sold into the market. And in the uh, same document, when you look at the percentage of, of ULBs in which informal sector of waste pickers, waste collectors, or recycling industry uh, has contributed in reducing waste in state policy that they have engaged with is 0%. Why? The, the reason it states is because the state, they, there is no recycling industry of waste in the state. So the question here is, is, is the presence of recycling industry only condition of looking at integrating waste workers? So, I mean, all these things point out to that when you're saying we're locating waste pickers, we are give, just giving them ID cards is definitely not enough. And if I look at, um, if I recollect Ila Bhatt's quote in, um, in a speech in NDTV, she said, we need multiplicity of economies and sub-economies that coexist in harmony. Monoculture or standardization of practices are nothing but ways of managing nature or managing pe uh, people. They're not life-giving forces. Uh, India's rich diversity needs the spirit of Bahuda, which is multiplicity to sustain it. 
And in short, I think uh, we need to move away from transactional connections to a shared sens a sensibility of truly empowered participate partnerships. Um, and, and I must flag private privatization is not equal to transformation. Instead, we have to look at democratized participation, which is from below. And uh, I just want to end with a quote from uh, Vinay Gidwani and Bharti Chaturvedi's essay, uh, Poverty of Geography, where it says that, um, uh, you know, it says that a thing, uh, it's in shrinking or outright rightly eliminating the the base pickers painfully impro improvise survival niches in the city and transforming them from petty, petty entrepreneurs with some dignity of work into daily wages or sporadically into salaried employees of waste management companies afforded neither independence of work nor meaningful economic security. So I, I'll stop here. Thank you, Lupna. Um. I'll allow Joanna to give a brief summary uh, of what Pinky said in Hindi for everyone who's joined who wants to uh, get a brief uh, in Hindi. Yeah, thank you. Um, like, please pardon me, I might not be able to do justice to all that you have said, which is very, very important, but I will really try. Uh, so, uh, Pinky ji ne jo baat rakhi hai, khas karke do muddo par unho ne jo बात रखने की कोशिश की एक तो यह है कि एकीकरण और समावेशीकरण खास करके जब हम जो कूड़ा बिनने वाले हैं उन श्रमिक हैं उनका उनके बारे में जब हम जो कानून है जो 2016 में जो रूल्स बने थे उसमें दो महत्व के मुद्दे हैं कि जो एकीकरण की बात करते हैं और समावेशीकरण की बात करते हैं खास एकीकरण जो है कहीं ना कहीं अः ये दर्शाता है कि हाँ एक श्रमिक है उसका किसी ना किसी तरीके से पंजीयन होना चाहिए और वो सिस्टम में जुड़े लेकिन समावेशीकरण फिर भी अभी भी कहीं ना कहीं बहुत कम स्तर पर देखने को मिलता है और समावेशीकरण की जो ये पूरी लड़ाई है वो गरिमा से जुड़ी हुई है क्योंकि समावेशीकरण से भी बहुत गहन रूप से जो है आ, आ, गरिमा जुड़ी हुई है आ, उन्होंने बहुत सारे जगहों पर जाकर के लगभग अठारह जितने शहरों में जाकर के कचरा बिनने वाले मजदूरों के साथ बातचीत की है और उनके आ, उन्होंने आ, सभी ने एक बात जरूर कही है कि आ, हम कचरा उठा तो जरूर सकते हैं लेकिन उसका जो पूरा व्यवस्थापन है उसमें कहीं ना कहीं बहुत सारे Uh, बहुत सारी बाधाएं देखने को भी मिलती है बैंगलोर uh, की उन्होंने बात की कि बैंगलोर में uh, रूल जाने से पहले भी पहले से ही uh, पंजीयन का जो पंजीयन की प्रक्रिया शुरू कर दी थी लोक अदालत में इसको मान्यता दी गई थी कि सभी जो कचरा बिनने वाले हैं उन सभी को इस uh, उन सभी का पंजीयन होना चाहिए uh, उन्होंने कुछ जो मुद्दे uh, नीति आयोग की जो रिपोर्ट है जिसमें मल्टीपल स्टेक होल्डर पार्टनरशिप की बात की है उसमें अलग अलग स्तर पर आ, जो एस डी जी तीन है चार है आठ है सोलह है उसमें अलग अलग तरीके से पूरे देश में जितने राज्य हैं उनका किस तरीके से स्टेटस रहा है और परफॉर्मेंस रहा है उस पर थोड़ी सी बात रखी उन्होंने जिसमें उन्होंने त्रिपुरा का एक एग्जाम्पल दिया कि जहां पर त्रिपुरा कहता है कि हमारे पास एक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम है पर क्लियरली uh, अगर आप रिपोर्ट को uh, गहराई में पढ़े तो वो एक uh, uh, थोड़ी uh, उसमें ज्यादा गहराई नजर नहीं आ रही है दूसरा बजट डॉक्यूमेंट्स के बारे में भी उन्होंने बात बात की कि किस तरीके से uh, इस वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट पर कितना खर्चा कम हो रहा है या uh, उस, उस खर्चे को जायज तरीके से दिखाने की कोई प्रक्रिया नहीं है उन्होंने अंत में जो एक कहा कि ये जो एक ट्रांजैक्शनल कनेक्शन है कि भाई कचरा उठाने वाला है एक रिसाइकलिंग में इंडस्ट्री तो है ही है लेकिन उसमें ये जो कनेक्शन है सिर्फ रजिस्टर करना है उनको इस इस पूरे चक्र में जोड़ना है उससे अगर हम एक शेयर्ड पार्टनरशिप 
और डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टिसिपेशन लोकतांत्रिक सहभागिता की ओर अगर हम जाने की कोशिश करें तो वो आगे चलकर इस पूरे क्षेत्र में जो हम बात कर रहे हैं कि हम श्रमिकों को कहाँ देख सकते हैं आ, तो इस स्तर पर आने की बहुत जरूरत है थैंक यू आई मीन आई एम सॉरी पिंकी बट लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बट इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू so three things that really stood out to me uh, from what pinky spoke about was one when we were talking about locating uh, informal waste because that's obviously being done in a context of shifting priorities of the waste management sector in general and those pressures come from various things including say um, the clean the race to be the cleanest city also when we talk about formalization uh, it's usually looked at in as a binary of formal good informal bad and there's obviously much more nuance to that and we can of course get into that uh, in the uh, question and answer and discussion as well and first and foremost when we talk about invisibility we are also talking about locating waste pickers and that is very diverse across the country in some cases waste pickers there is no mapping of waste pickers to begin with uh, and there's very very little data on this sector because uh, of the informality so like pinky said data on income on working conditions even the places of work landfills are not acknowledged by many uh, governments local governments across the country so very many interesting issues there and hope we can get into them in the discussion uh, i'll now pass on to the second speaker dr swapan kumar sinha uh, dr sinha is the technical director of dritu research and technology in assam dritu is a company that aims to provide services from understanding problems to finding sustainable solutions he has a phd in biotechnology from guwahati university and about 27 years of experience in forestry redox biology phyco medication and waste management he has worked in various capacities in the national afforestation and eco development board government of india and with the state forest research institute in itanagar he's also been with terry the research uh, energy and resources institute today he will be speaking about the rights and opportunities of waste workers in the transition from sbm uh, 1.0 to sbm 2.0 uh, particularly on inclusion in smaller ulbs and with in ulbs with fiscal constraints over to you dr sinha uh, thank you very much uh... Uh, Lubna, for giving this opportunity to talk uh, on this platform, I'm also thankful to National uh, Alliance for People's Movement for giving me opportunity to speak from the region of Northeast. So, uh, in in fact, uh, I'll just share one slide here. Okay, yeah. So, thing is that uh, we are working uh, on uh, waste management. Uh, when i was in terry uh, for in the solution aspects right so now uh, when i have been involved in the search for a mission from 1.0 oh there we understood that 2016 has very clearly said there's need to be inclusion of uh, this waste workers into the system then only we can uh, do a uh, justice to the uh, management of Uh, waste in the urban cities i'll just see how do i make it so slide so yeah yeah right so uh, thereafter uh, when when we started working on that then we come across so many changes uh, in the system of uh, waste worker inclusion in the urban scenario Now, if we see uh, the tran transition of uh, municipal waste management uh, when it was launched uh, the 20 uh, this swachh bharat mission was launched in 2014 the it, it started with the the privacy protection uh, during the verification process and uh, at the same time uh, source segregation was well emphasized and uh, to some extent processing yeah there uh, waste workers provision was very well defined and they are involved in so many modules in the part of the northeast uh, uh, swapanji there's a request there's a request if you can please be slightly louder okay right thank you right the uh, madam uh, pinky my previous uh, speaker has said that uh, the tripura 
plastic waste recycling issues. So uh, since we are working in this region for quite some time, so here waste pickers are not registered as of now in totality in UN village, right? That's why we do not know uh, how many waste pickers are there. Uh, though waste pickers are uh, visible picking those dry waste in a capital or a little uh, bigger cities. So here, uh, like you have small, some in uh, Guwahati you have, and some smaller towns in Guwahati, in Agartala in some cases, but in a smaller ULB we don't have, right? So, and so how they manage the waste then? The question comes. So when we went through all the uh, settings of uh, their waste management, uh, what they do, uh, basically they organize the women, uh, those who are non-traditional uh, non waste workers, right? So they are uh, put into waste working, uh, waste uh, you know, uh, segregation, you know, uh, and other uh, lifting waste from collecting door to door and so on and so forth. So this is what the uh, scenario at the moment. Uh, and it was still happening at the moment from SBM 1.0. Now with the evolution of SBM 2.0, it again started the black water management and gray water management. So there, uh, again, there will be issues of those uh, uh, septage collection, uh, sewers workers, issues will come. Now after solid, now liquid will be uh, more uh, problematic what I could see from here because uh, it requires a lot of uh, skill, a lot of uh, safety issues uh, and uh, you know uh, and besides that you need a lot of support from the the stakeholders this and uh, there is a, another provision that uh, emergency response sanitation units to be established across the uh, districts where uh, there has to be gazette notification so that uh, district commission can be the authority for that and and the uh, uh, the ULBs can be part of the members even there as of now it is not formed here at the moment right so so in case of any uh, sanitation emergency comes then uh, the how to address it so our uh, sanitary workers are not trained to that emergency situation so it is in the process of making it so when the process comes in place uh, that time our uh, waste workers will get enough uh, you know capacity building so that they can handle in the emergency situation like you know fire tenders how they manage it so now if we see that uh, the transition from uh, sbm 1.0 to 2.0 uh, if we see in terms of uh, open defecation free odf to odf plus they have said which you have uh, water supply into water available into that the facility then you have odf plus plus that you have another uh, you know uh, waste the treatment facility so that's what the black water treatment come in place that's sbm 2.0 now sbm 2.0 again emphasizes the water plus so water plus is that you have to recycle some of the water issues. right and again it also says that uh, the garbage free cities right so garbage free cities and they uh, uh, you know, at the moment what uh, they are putting that earlier they are putting a lot of those metallic big big bins in some uh, collection points uh, where uh, those uh, waste will be dumped there and the uh, vehicle will come and lift in routine schedule sorry dr sinha would you like to move the slides forward uh, and i think if you could speak a little louder um, okay okay <laughs> thanks <laughs> okay okay fine thank you so uh, my my slide is in which slide now at the moment it's it's on the first slide this in second now is it moving no i still see it on the first slide okay okay i don't know I'll just... you can see now uh i yes yes transition yes, right. of municipal waste management yes yeah right 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 so that's i was just uh, because we are working closely to sbm so i'm talking in terms of sbm evolution so that our Waste workers, how they integrate themselves, and where's the opportunity, and all this. What I was thinking about. Then, then you say then the the legacy waste, uh, you know, management. This is what uh, the dumpiers 
So we are our uh, waste pickers go and collect those uh, uh, dry waste. So this the in this uh, process it is going to be happening legacy waste. Now a lot of uh, activities going on uh, to uh, uh, reclaim those dumping grounds so that legacy waste are managed like that. So now at the moment what I could see the uh, is which is universally accepted the uh, the challenges before the waste work. So at the moment, they need to be recognized fully and part of the, uh, you know, our uh, waste management process with a dignity. So this is lacking at the moment, what we could see here. We see them uh, uh, to some untouchability sort of thing, what I could see. And, uh, and they are not welcomed to the, uh, you know, site where they are collecting or they are working. So until and unless we uh, ourselves recognize them, give them full support and motivation, it will be very difficult to manage, right? At the same time, uh, the, the working atmosphere and working place is also not healthy uh, in terms of, you know, uh, environment what they are working. And in what we see, most of those uh, workers, they do not have the, the safety gears. So without safety gears, they work, in very difficult or hazardous situations. And at the same time, they are not at the moment ex having access to financial benefit, which uh, so many uh, social welfare schemes are there. So, uh, and the uh, issue uh, of this is going to happen until unless we recognize them. And there has to be awareness among them as well as in the ULB level. So that uh, ULB level also, they are not uh, much uh, you know, having a program to how they will include in uh, uh, do in uh, uh, do the inclusion of waste workers. They are only concerned at the moment in the self-help group sort of thing or little uh, smaller groups where they can handle it. This is what we are seeing now. Now, uh, now if you see the very interesting fact, uh, it is things are improving than before. Earlier, uh, it was a waste picker or waste worker or to say now. The terminology has changed, shifted towards Safai Mitra. It's a recognition from the uh, policy level or in the higher level. So where uh, the, the enactment of that employment of uh, manual scavenger and construction of dilatrins, 1990, it was very crucial for them uh, for in terms of uh, safety issues and health issues. Uh, then you have a transition to rehabilitation of uh, manual scavengers, SRMS, 20, 2007. Then you have a uh, provision of employment as manual scavenger and their rehabilitation 2013. So things goes on now. Uh, this is how the recognition goes on. So, and they have, there is also, uh, as everybody aware that uh, for their welfare, uh, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has formed that NSKFDC, where uh, they can avail some of the livelihood opportunities or a, a better uh, working conditions for them in while working with the waste. Now, uh, if we see uh, the 2020, the launch of Safai Mitra Suraksha is a is a, their protection and safety. So those peop uh, people they are entering into safety tanks or sewer lines. So if there need to be mechanized system so that they do not have contact with the waste directly. This is the this is the the act says. So for that, uh, Suraksha for uh, 2020 for the Safai Mitra, it says there has to be a sewer entry professional. That means the person, the waste workers or the sewer, sewer commandos, they do recognize as a position. They need to be trained before entering into it. They need to be given all those uh, necessary instructions, SOPs to be followed. But uh, at the moment, we have to see how it progresses, right? So, and, uh, and it also says for them, we need to have at least three social welfare schemes to be availed, at least for ration card and some other facility. Now, the when I was going through uh, this uh, Suraksha 2020 uh, compliance for some of the ULBs, now I am in uh, IMFAL uh, for some work with the waste related activity here in ULBs. Here, uh, the PP gears and safety gears is 
not yet uh, you know distributed or procured in, in many ulvs at the moment so now this ppe kit and safety gears are very much essential as for cpho norms so without this uh, there is every chances of getting you know injured while doing the activity right so now with the suraksha 2020 there is a, a very good opportunity for our waste workers to adopt uh, to the evolving urban sanitation scenario so earlier uh, there is a only septic tank was there now it has been sewer line has started coming up in northeast so now uh, septic tank was never uh, emptied earlier now it has started doing emptying through the cesspool of the ulbs now while since it is becoming a recurring activity for the ulbs and for the uh, you know households so here comes uh, cap capacity building for those uh, sewer workers or the septic septic uh, uh, emptying process workers to get involved in this they need to be trained for that then only it will fulfill the requirements for them so this the slide uh, i am just sharing that nscap which has given uh, the benefit uh, schemes for those uh, uh, sub safai workers so earlier safai worker uh, was basically for those uh, community or caste based now it uh, it recognized as that uh, anybody can work with that, irrespective of the caste, religion, or anything. Those who are interested, they can work in uh, waste-related activities. And and once this uh, municipal uh, uh, certifies them, they are the workers in their uh, you know, municipal area. They can avail this scheme, right? So now uh, I, uh, we are basically now interested in SVM 2.0, where it says. Uh, sustainable sanitation and treatment of used water. So now the there is a uh, dilemma. Dilemma is that under Jal Jabban mission, you have a Har Ghar Jal uh, scheme where you are uh, trying to ensure at least 75 liters of water, tapped water to every household. So once households water is being supplied, then 80% of them comes out to be uh, used water. And they need to be treated, right? So, so in this treatment process, uh, this SVM 2.0 says at least you have to ensure that uh, not, uh, water are treated and disposed to the environment. Here, our uh, waste workers can also get involved in this process, uh, either in uh, black water where FSTP uh, is being set up in most of the ULBs in Northeast, uh, and gray water treatment is being also set up. There also our waste workers have ample opportunity to work uh, other than solid waste now uh, urban uh, management system for the uh, solid and liquid waste is changing from before uh, to a new dimension so now we need also to adopt to them so uh, these are the system at the moment is being adopted in the northeast but at, at, at the moment uh, fstp one or two is coming up at the moment but not much so now entire northeast we don't have fstp as such if you can say it so there, uh, our uh, this uh, our uh, sewer workers can very well involve into this. This is what what I could see, right? So uh, this is the entire process where they can be involved. Uh, I'll not speak on this much, but I have a very good thought-provoking wall painting I came across on the while I was going through it. Here is a big salute of wall paintings being uh, uh, put up in in one of the reports. Where it says police officers, it says uh, doctors, it says media person, everybody is being uh, given huge applause. While a waste worker, which is going near, passing through nearby the wall painting, looking at that. So now we, as a stakeholder, as a citizen, we need to uh, give them enough uh, motivation so they can also be appreciated that way. So by this, I end my talk and thank you for giving opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sina. Uh, Joanna, you could give a summary in Hindi, and then we can go to the Yeah, thank you, uh, Lubna. Uh, uh, Dr. Swapan uh, Mishra ji, who Dritu ke saath kaam karte hai, unho ne uh, Northeast me uh, waste management ke sandarbh me kya chitra hai, usko dikhane ki uh, koshish ki hai. Unho ne kaha hai ki uh, Guwahati agar tala जैसे शहरों में आपको 
वेस्ट पिकर्स दिखेंगे लेकिन ज्यादातर वेस्ट पिकर्स ना रजिस्टर्ड है और ये काम जो है बहुत ही इनफॉर्मल तरीके से होता है उनका कहना ये है कि जो महिलाएं हैं जो उनको इस काम में वेस्ट पिकिंग के काम में जोड़ा जा रहा है लेकिन उन्होंने ये भी कहा है कि काफी नॉर्थ ईस्ट में जो जरूरतें हैं कि इमरजेंसी रिस्पांस मैकेनिज्म है उसकी जरूरत है और खास करके इन वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट का जो स्किल है उसकी ट्रेनिंग एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग के लिए बहुत सारे प्रोविजन करने की अभी भी जरूरत है और उनका उन्होंने पूरा एक दृश्य दिखाया है कि किस तरीके से ब्लैक वाटर मैनेजमेंट ग्रे वाटर मैनेजमेंट लिक्विड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट बहुत ज्यादा अभी बढ़ने वाला है लेकिन उसके लिए जो प्रावधान है और या लोगों की जरूरत है और उन उन लोगों की कैपेसिटी जो बढ़नी चाहिए उस पर अभी बहुत धीमी गति से काम चल रहा है और उनका कहना ये भी है कि कई सारे चैलेंजेस है कि श्रमिकों के स्वास्थ्य संबंधित उनकी सुरक्षा संबंधित और उनके किसी भी तरीके से जो सोशल वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम से उसमें समावेश के भी मुद्दे कहीं नजर आ रहे हैं उनका कहना ये भी है कि जो अवेयरनेस या अवेयरनेस की जो यूएलबी लेवल पर बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत है अभी तक ऐसा ही हो रहा है कि कर्मचारियों को एस के माध्यम से ढूंढा जा रहा है पर कोई एक सघन रूप से ऐसा कोई प्रयास नहीं हो रहा है Uh, उन्होंने सफाई मित्र स्कीम के बारे में जो पूरी uh, बात रखी कि सफाई मित्र सुरक्षा के uh, जो uh, उसमें किस तरीके से स्वेयर एंट्री uh, पर प्रोफेशनल uh, एंट्री होनी चाहिए और उसका पूरा एक सिस्टम तैयार किया जाना चाहिए उसके बारे में उन्होंने बहुत सारी बातें रखी हुई है और uh, उनका कहना ये भी है कि ये सुरक्षा दो 2020 जो है वो एक अच्छा आ, आ, मौका है कि जहाँ पर आ, आ, जो फिलहाल वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट की स्थिति है उस पर उसको सुधारने के लिए एक मौका है उनका दूसरा उनके आ, लास्ट में उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि आ, एक आ, अभी जब जब जल जीवन मिशन आ, पूरे देश में जहाँ पर उसको क्रियान्वित करने की कोशिश की जा रही है कि जहाँ पर हर घर जल कि हम बात कर रहे हैं तो उसी के साथ साथ एक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट जो पानी निकलेगा ग्रे वाटर निकलेगा उसका जो ट्रीटमेंट है उसको भी इसके साथ साथ करने की जरूरत है और वो दोनों ने पूरी अपने पीपीटी में एक क्या प्रोसेस है वो बताने की कोशिश की है उन उन्होंने अंत में एक ये भी कहा कि एफ अभी तक नॉर्थ ईस्ट में इतनी डिवेलप नहीं हुआ है या thank you lokna thanks to anna so uh, dr sina spoke about we speakers how its their situations are different in big cities and in smaller ulbs and the transition from sbm 1.0 to 2.0 and how 2.0 will look at uh, dealing with legacy waste grey water and liquid waste management whereas 1.0 was more focused on source segregation and collection uh, and highlighted key issues of dignity health safety and social welfare um i'll invite dr uh, dunu roy to speak next uh, dunu roy is a chemical engineer and political ecologist he has been associated with the hazard center in new delhi for over 30 years previously he's been with the front for rapid economic advancement and the worldwide fund for nature mr roy has developed a deep understanding of linkages across various sectors uh, and today he'll be sharing his critical perspectives on uh, waste pick organizations uh, in this context Uh, Mr. Roy, over to you. Mr. Roy, if you can hear us, could you uh, unmute? Uh, I think you're still muted. Mr. Roy, are you able to hear us? Yes, 
Dunu, if you're able to hear us, can you either unmute or maybe write in the chat so that we know that you're in? Great. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. My apologies. Go ahead. I, I kind of assumed I would be last. Um, thank you for inviting me. I thought I would talk about Hindi, but I would like to talk about the chat in the chat list. I would like to talk about the chat list. I would like to talk about the chat list. So I will speak in English. Uh, I'll also therefore speak slower because now I have to translate my thoughts from Hindi into English. Uh, so let me, okay, yeah. Uh, I've been listening to the last two sessions and I have listened to today's session also. And I thought I would kind of uh, give a, a more uh, macro view within which to locate this discussion, because I think it would be useful. Let me begin with a saying in Hindi. Aap logo ni ye kahawat suni hogi, muh mein ram bhagal mein churi, which essentially means that your mouth says ram ram, and under your armpit you have a knife. And I think it's important to distinguish between what the mouth says and what the armpit really does. Because we get a lot of, you know, this is the age of double speak. So what uh, is being said and what is being written and what is being proclaimed is not necessarily what is really happening. Uh, as a good example, I might give you the constitution. Hum log sab samvidhan ki badi badai karte hain. And we are all very fond of the constitution as a, as a signifier of democracy. But uh, this constitution itself is a very tricky thing. You know, it gives uh, rights to citizens. It talks about we, the people of India. But embedded in the constitution, there is a foreigner's act. And that foreigner's act is that you have to prove that you're not a foreigner before you can be accepted as a citizen of India. And that is, you know, this uh, typical example of what the mouth says and what the armpit does. So here the proof uh, of, uh, of being accused is uh, transferred from the accuser to the accused. So you have to prove yourself to be not guilty. You're not assumed to be not guilty. Let me take this and uh, transfer that to this, you know, in the title of this, this discussion. And I'm really presenting to you what I've been learning over the last 30, 40 years in this field. I also had several mistaken notions until I realized that you know there was a need to challenge them. <clears throat> uh, this idea of rapid urbanization, it's almost taken for granted that rapid urbanization is going to take place. And you know, for about 40 years, now we've been fed on this diet that urbanization takes place because people don't want to live in misery in rural areas. They want a better life in urban areas. That is why they migrate to urban areas. This is what the mouth says. This is the ram. But the churi, the knife, actually lies somewhere else. Uh, until the 1980s, actually, this rapid urbanization was not part of our public discussion. And I'm saying this deliberately knowing that many of the people here may not be, have been born uh, until the 1980s. So they may not have much even understanding or awareness of this period. It is in 1980s actually that the period of transition begins. Uh, GDP dips, it goes down. There's a big scare and a new model emerges uh, courtesy the World Bank, the IMF, McKinsey Corporation, followed by Planning Commission, 
Reserve Bank of India, everybody gets onto it and they suddenly start declaring in public documents that the city is the engine of growth. What does this mean? I mean, suddenly, why do they take up the city as the engine of growth? And uh, the logic behind it, or actually the calculation behind it is that if you take a worker from a rural area and bring that worker to an urban area, doing roughly the same work, say a mason, a carpenter, a plumber, whatever, uh, the productivity of that worker will increase four times. There's a planning commission study to that effect. It's now gone up much more, but at that time in 1985, the study said uh, four times. Now, what does this entail? It means you take somebody from a rural area, bring that person to an urban area, you're going to get four times more production out of that person. That does not necessarily mean that uh, that worker is going to get four times the wage. So your GDP is going to go up hugely, but the worker is not really going to benefit. Uh, so the money is going to go somewhere else. And that is the, the crux of the issue because it is beginning in the 1980s that the wealth of the top 10% starts going up and the wealth of the rest starts going down. And you can clearly, I hope, see the connection between this model of growth uh, where they say that if the cities grow rapidly, then GDP will grow. And of course, it's accompanied by what many of us have heard uh, is the trickle-down theory that if you invest at the top and the top becomes richer, then eventually the benefits of all that growth are going to trickle down to the bottom. So these are two standard theories of growth that are very much before there before us. So one has to spot in all this, where does Ram lie and where does the knife lie? And uh, uh, let me take, you know, sustainable development. What exactly does sustainable development mean in this context? Is it, does it mean sustaining this rapid growth? Or does it mean that growth has to be sustained within a natural ecosystem? See, there are two very different concepts. Uh, one says that you have to look after the sustainability of nature. The other says you have to look at the sustainability of growth. And curiously enough, the word that we use is sustainable development. So what exactly are we trying to say? What is being sustained? And therefore, what are the SDGs all about? This is my first point, that we have to learn to distinguish between what is true and what is false, particularly in this age of fake news and false governance in some ways. My second point is within this context, this larger context of the city as an engine of growth, where growth is actually the poor getting poorer and the rich getting richer, uh, very simply put, uh, what is, the, what is the, the importance of labor rights? And in the waste sector in particular, in this, what we call the waste sector. Uh, let me give you another example similar to the constitution, how things change. Until the 1980s, until at least 1990, the public dis debate amongst unions, amongst uh, even a section of the people through the media was about a living wage. And this goes back to the 1948 wage committee just to post independence and this wage committee established that the worker should not be treated as an individual should be treated as a family of four and the wage should be adequate for the living of these four individuals so what in hindi we call roti kapda makan so there must be enough food for these four people. There must be enough clothing and there must be enough shelter. The wage must account for all this. And later on, in, uh, until the struggle went on till the 1990s, the Supreme Court even declared that this was not enough. Uh, they added first 25% for 
things like education, health, etc., which are rights. And then uh, they added another 20% for social uh, needs, weddings, entertainment, and so on. So if I look at the debate today, we are not talking about living wage at all. Today, we are just struggling to talk about minimum wage, whether it is Manrega or whether it is uh, the urban situation. We're just talking about minimum wage, how we can get minimum. And if you look at what the labor minister pronounced a few years ago as what they called floor level wage, which is even lower than minimum wage. That was 176 rupees. Now, 176 rupees, can you imagine bringing up a family of four on 176 rupees per day? It's barely enough to sustain one person. So that's why it's a floor level wage. So how, you know, this whole discussion, this whole debate starts changing. And what is being said is got nothing to do what is, with what is actually happening. In the field of waste, and I acknowledge uh, my mistake too in those days, I had to do some of the first studies in this waste sector. You know, we started by trying to establish the value of waste and therefore the value of the labor, which was picking up this waste. And waste suddenly became a resource. It never was a resource early. Waste starts becoming a resource in the 1980s. And it has a lot to do with the emergence of FCMG, that is fast moving consumer goods and packaging and plastics in particular. So we, we are talking now, and this, this discussion continues today, we are now talking of the rights of waste workers because they are producing value. And this value must be recognized. And in the context, and many Westpac organizations are doing this, either directly or indirectly, that there must be the right to the waste, there must be a right to identity as waste pickers, and there must be the right to the space in which to do the collecting, segregating, uh, sometimes the recycling. This must be done in collaboration with the, the local body, with the municipalities. And the whole organization of waste pickers has to be there to protect the waste picker in this terrain. But if I put it in the context of the city as the engine of growth, then what is going to happen and what is already happening is that the moment waste pickers establish that waste has value, private corporations are going to act. It is inevitable. And it's got to do, do with a certain threshold. The moment it costs 10 lakhs, 1 crore, whatever, that's when private firms start dying. And they say, this value, why should it not come into the private sector? Why should it not be my field of investment so I can earn profits of it? You know, there's an inevitable logic to it. And it is through this that the whole discussion starts of how organizations can take place, how self-help groups can be, can be coming together, how uh, they will earn some profits, how technology can be used to make li life easier for labor. But it is inevitably linked to privatization. And because of privatization, as we heard earlier also in these discussions, you know, restrictions will start to be placed on waste pickers. That you can't collect before this time. You can't go to the garbage heap. You can't have these waste dumps. What khattas they used to be called? The dumps in each neighborhood, they have been removed. Uh, now the truck will come and take off the waste directly. So it will be uh, collection door to door. And... Uh, this is inevitable. I'm, I'm just trying to point out that we must understand the linkages. You know, what the, the Burman report did was actually to put these realities into very flowery language. And we got carried away. We said, oh, great, that Burman committee has done such a great job. They are finally given waste pickers a place in the sun. And uh, we were also happy. 
And actually what Burman Committee did was basically open the door for the recognition of waste as a resource and therefore for the privatization of this. And they use all kinds of instruments. I think two meetings ago, somebody was mentioning about Bangladesh. You know, this is precisely it. Uh, Bangladesh is many of the people who pick waste in almost every city for reasons of migration speak, don't speak Hindi. If they at all speak Hindi, they speak Hindi with a very peculiar accent. And this is taken as an indicator that they've come from Bangladesh because they must be Bengalis. And then many of them are Muslims, therefore they were Lungis, therefore they must be Bangladeshis. So this kind of uh, you know, structure that is built upon what we consider to be very progressive steps is the real face of the knife. We keep saying Ram Ram and they're all the time doing Churi Churi and they say such good policies are made and they're never implemented. The point I'm trying to make is that those policies will never be implemented. The whole point of the policy is not to be implemented. The whole point of the policy is to misguide and mislead us. And until and unless we recognize that, that the truth lies somewhere else. What therefore can we do? And therefore I come to my last point that how do we get away from this? Is there a different way of looking at this? See, we have a very clear choice before us. And I uh, I'm not an activist, so I don't speak on behalf of all the activists who are assembled here. I speak more as an observer and as a helper. So as a helper, I see things happening and I'm just pointing out uh, that these things are happening. So we need to understand that these things are happening and perhaps therefore understand what are the possible ways. See, here's the structure. I've just outlined to you what is the structure of exploitation. It's a universal structure. It's not just uh, located in waste. It's located, I mean, the same thing that has happened to waste makers happened earlier to vegetable sellers. It happened before that to uh, construction workers. You know, it's happening all over the place. So it's nothing new. It's just that because we are so isolated in our realm of waste that many of us don't see beyond waste. We only see waste. We don't see the city. We don't see what's happening in the rest of the city. I would therefore say that you, the choice before us is either to say, we take this structure for granted and let us see what we can win from this structure. Small gains, small marginal benefits. We can get an identity card out of it. We can get maybe some social security so we can visit the dispensary and get treated uh, for cuts and burns and injuries. We can uh, probably sign an MOU with the municipality and uh, they will give us the waste. And on that waste, you know, 5,000 waste pickers will be able to earn a dignified living. These are some of the concepts that are quite prevalent in this sector. Or, and that is the choice before us, or can we take some steps which challenges the structure itself? That the structure itself is unacceptable. The structure of growth, of the cities as engines of growth, of trickle-down theory, of uh, from living wage to minimum wage, to survival wage, these are unacceptable. And if they are unacceptable, then clearly those who make policy, those who do not implement policy, those who govern, those who administer, those who do the politics behind all this, they have to be challenged and unseated. We need a different form of government. The whole, you know, and I hear it so often that we need a restoration of democracy. I think this restoration of democracy is a pipe dream. Democracy itself was fraudulent to begin. What we need is a new system. And what kind of system? And I'll end by just giving maybe three or four ideas 
I don't have solutions. I have ideas which I would like to discuss. One is we stop talking about waste. Why? Because waste is something that is unnatural. It is not ecological. In nature, there's no waste. We start talking about what came before the Kula Wala. And that was the Raddi Wala. See, the concept of a Raddi Wala is very different from a Kula Wala. The Kula Wala throws out what you don't need from the home. The Raddi Wala comes to your house to take from you what you used and no longer have a use for. So that it can be reused. So when do we make this transition? To say we will not talk of waste, we are not waste pickers, we are not talking about waste management, we are talking about how to make things that grow useless into more useful things. And that's a very, very broad conceptual framework which needs addressing. One. Second, when we talk of identity, what identity are we talking about? Identity as citizens? The moment we talk of identity as citizens, we are defeated. Why? Because the Citizenship Act in this country recognizes only three forms of citizenship. One is either you're born here, that means you must have a birth certificate. Two, if you have property here, which means you must have a property title. And three, if you are naturalized, which needs the first two or some proof which leaves out 60% of the population. They have no way of proving these three things. Why is it that citizenship, the whole issue of identity, is focused on residence? Why can it not be focused on work? Anybody who works produces. Anybody who produces is doing something to help the economy and his fellow human beings or her fellow human beings. The idea of identity based on work is a very powerful instrument. Its time has come and probably this is something we need to discuss. Third point on this and this is the idea of space. We are still talking about circumscribed space. You know, a bit of space to segregate, another bit of space to recycle. This is all, according to me, utter rubbish. The whole city must be cleared. The entire space. Why just a bit of space? Because when you claim the entire city, you claim the entire economy. And the final element in this is that, therefore, it cannot be an alliance of waste pickers. It has to be an alliance of working people everywhere, anywhere, whether working at home, working to bring up children, working to transport anybody from some place to be, working to recycle, working to produce, whatever, all forms of work. It has to be an alliance of working people which will across, it will cross boundaries of work, of gender, of caste, of race, and somehow we have to reclaim the entire earth. I mean, we can't just go on like this in our little insular spaces saying, I'm only going to talk about waste. Why? Because I have worked in waste. This is not going to work according to me. Anyway, I offer these thoughts for what they are worth. Uh, I hope uh, some of it will get translated into Hindi for the benefit of those who don't understand English. Uh, I hope some of these issues will get discussed in the next few minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Roy. Uh, Joanna, you could provide a translation for the rest of the guests. Yeah, uh, am I audible or I, I was thinking, I was my- Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, दुनु जी ने जो बात की उन्होंने शुरुआत की के उस कहावत से शुरू की के बगल में राम और मुंह में राम और बगल में छुरी इससे शुरुआत की और समझाने की कोशिश की कि ये हमारे आज की यथास्थिति में किस तरीके से नजर आता है और 
जो हम सतत शहरीकरण की बात कह रहे हैं तो जो सतत शहरीकरण है वो पहले से ही है या 1980 के दशक में हम उस पर बात कर रहे थे या उस उन्नीस के दशक में इस पर और ज्यादा सघन गहन रूप से चर्चा शुरू हुई आ, उनका उन्होंने ये भी कहा है कि कि आ, जब हम कहते हैं कि कोई एक शहर आ, ग्रोथ का एक साधन बन जाता है तो क्या हम उसमें किस तरीके से हम उसको देख रहे हैं आ, क्या यही है कि गांव से आ, कोई आ, काम करने आता है और शहर में आ, आ, काम करने आता है तो क्या वो शहरीकरण का एक आ, निर्देश है या नहीं Uh, उन्होंने ये एक uh, उस वक्त की कुछ बातें रखने की कोशिश की कि uh, जब जीडीपी uh, शहर से जब गांव से जब कोई काम करने आता है तो चौगनी उसकी क्षमता uh, बढ़ जाती है और उसकी वजह से क्या होता है कि जीडीपी में बेशक uh, बढ़ोतरी होती है लेकिन जो ऊपर के 10 प्रतिशत लोग हैं जो जिनकी uh, वेल्थ में ज्यादा इंक्रीज होती है लेकिन uh, बाकी के जो लोग हैं उनके वेल्थ में इतना ज्यादा इंक्रीज नहीं होता है आ, उन्होंने एक महत्वपूर्ण बात यही कही कि जब हम आ, वेस्ट की बात करते हैं तो वेस्ट अभी इतना महत्वपूर्ण इसीलिए हो गया है क्योंकि वो एक रिसोर्स बन गया है आ, एक संसाधन के रूप में हम उसको देखते हैं इसीलिए अभी उस, उस पर एक वैल्यू जुड़ी हुई है इस वजह से वो इतना महत्वपूर्ण बन गया है आ, Uh, और uh, जब हम किसी संसाधन की बात जब वेस्ट एक संसाधन का रूप रह, ले लेता है तब वो बहुत ही uh, रूप से निजीकरण को एक uh, निजीकरण को एक बड़ा द्वार दे देता है आने के लिए जिसकी वजह से बहुत सारे uh, स्तर पर जो कार्य uh, मजदूर है उन पर विभिन्न प्रकार से रिस्ट्रिक्शन आ जाते हैं Uh, उन्होंने ये uh, कुछ जो uh, अपने अपनी राय जो रखने की कोशिश की है कि हमारे पास uh, एक तो चॉइस हमारे पास क्लियर है या हम कि ये चीजें हो रही हैं अभी और उसे हमें देखने की जरूरत है नीति बनती है नीति में बहुत सारे रूप से uh, अच्छाइया लाने की कोशिश की जाती है पर वो हकीकत में क्या है उसको देखने की हमें कोशिश करनी चाहिए उनका ये भी कहना है कि ये जो पूरा ढांचा है वो किसी ना किसी तरीके से एक एक्सप्लाइटेशन का ढांचा है तो हमारे सामने जो चॉइस रह जाती है वो यही है कि या तो हम इस ढांचे को आ, इस तरीके से देखें कि ये है इसमें खामियां हैं और इससे हम क्या इसमें से हमें क्या मिल सकता है चाहे वो रजिस्ट्रेशन हो सकता है हेल्थ बेनिफिट्स हो सकता है हम उसको आ, उस तरीके से भी इस ढांचे में से उसको निकालने की कोशिश कर सकते हैं दूसरा ये भी है कि या तो दूसरा उसका ऑप्शन हमारे पास ये हो सकता है या एक चॉइस जो हमारे पास ये हो सकती है कि हम इस ढांचे को किसी ना किसी रूप से चैलेंज करें जो नीति बनाते हैं नीति का अमलीकरण जो नहीं करते हैं और जो हर तरीके से कोशिश करते हैं कि ये जो नीतियां बनी हुई है वो आ, आ, जिसके लिए बनी है उन तक ना पहुंचे या उनको किसी किस, किसी भी रूप से आ, उनका अमलीकरण ना हो उनको चैलेंज करने की हमें आ, बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है आ, हमें जरूरत है आ, उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि अगर हम आ, कुछ आइडियाज जो शेयर किए हैं कि अगर हम पूरा जो है उसके बारे में बात करना बंद कर दे वो अननेचुरल है पूरा नेचुरल नहीं है वो अननेचुरल है उन्होंने जो एक रद्दी वाला और कूड़े वाले के बीच में जो डिफरेंस है उसको बताने की कोशिश की कि हम क्या हम उस तरफ जा सकते हैं कि जो अभी क्या हम हमारी हम वो शिफ्ट ला सकते हैं कि जो हमारे लिए अभी महत्व हमारे लिए जरूरी नहीं है या आ, उसको हम किस तरीके से और यूजफुल बना सकते हैं उस पर उस आ, क्या हम वहां तक का एक शिफ्ट ला सकते हैं या नहीं ला सकते हैं 
आ, उन्होंने सिटीजनशिप की भी बात की कि आ, अगर हम डिग्निटी की गरिमा की बात करते हैं और गरिमा अगर आ, हमारे नागरिकता से जुड़ी हुई है तो हमारे देश में नागरिकता तीन तरीके से जो है कि आप अगर यहाँ आपका जन्म हुआ है आपके पास किसी भी तरीके से कोई संसाधन है प्रॉपर्टी है जमीन है और अगर आपके पास ऊपर के दोनों चीजें हैं तो उसके उस लिहाज से आप नागरिक बन जाते हैं जिसमें से लग, जिसकी वजह से लगभग सात प्रतिशत लोग जो है इस इसमें नहीं आते हैं तो इनका यही कहना है कि नागरिकता क्यों प्रॉपर्टी या रेसिडेंसी पे रेसिडेंसी जो जुड़ी हुई है और काम से क्यों नहीं जुड़ी हुई है और इसको हमें ज्यादा से ज्यादा हमारी चर्चाएं इस पर होनी चाहिए कि नागरिकता जो है वो काम से जुड़ी हुई होनी चाहिए दूसरी ने स्पेस की बात की है जगह की बात की हम क्लेम कर रहे हैं कि एक छोटा एक ही थर क्यों हम क्लेम करना चाहते हैं क्या हम पूरे शहर को क्लेम कर सकते हैं या नहीं कर सकते हैं उन अंत में उनका यही कहना है कि ये पूरा जो है एक अलायंस ऑफ वर्किंग पीपल बनना चाहिए जिसमें विभिन्न प्रकार के लोगों का समावेश हो और ये एक अलायंस के रूप में हमें देखने की जरूरत है या थैंक्स सो मिस्टर रॉय ऑफर्ड अ बिग पिक्चर पर्सपेक्टिव अ मैक्रो व्यू ऑफ हाउ सिटीज आर व्यूड हाउ वेस्ट इज व्यूड विद इन द सिटीज हाउ वर्कर्स आर व्यूड एंड द इनएविटेबिलिटी ऑफ प्राइवेट इंटरेस्ट इन वेस्ट um also many interesting points which joanna just summarized which i guess we can get into uh, in the discussion shortly uh, before we do that uh, i'll invite shibu to share uh, his views on the issue shibu nair is the india coordinator for gaia the global alliance for incinerator alternatives um it's a worldwide alliance that envisions a toxic free world without incineration shibu is also a veteran in zero waste initiatives in kerala and a proponent of holistic waste management solutions he'll be speaking a bit on his reflections on the entire uh, presentations before him as well as in general the status of waste workers and waste pickers uh, in the context of the city shubhu uh good evening to all and thank you lubna and uh, i think uh, i am uh, i'm not very well versed with this uh, kind of a topic but i am just trying to uh, present uh, some of Uh, the observations i have uh, on on this uh, issue of integration like we are hearing it for long time integration of waste pickers into solid waste management program and uh, with uh, the kind of urbanization i think uh, uh, dunu was rightly um, like pointing at that the word urbanization and uh, uh, how we uh, take it for forward so so like uh, taken taken for granted thing like let it happen things like that So I think uh, I am just uh, I am not going to elaborate uh, much on this because I think already the speakers have uh, elaborated on the the kind of uh, uh, scenarios and the the issues. Uh, so I just want to reiterate on a couple of uh, components where uh, like uh, we have to focus on one. If you look at the solid waste management uh, uh, activity, like solid waste management is actually. Uh, the other side of consumption right so in a kind of a urbanized world or in a kind of a developed world so like we all are talking about development and consumption is the is the fuel uh, uh, which uh, for them like uh, quote unquote that that is the fuel for uh, development what they see as development and uh, all the policies and frameworks uh, in this system is aligned uh, to uh, to accelerate that process of consumption like uh, production like the process of production consumption and then wasting and whatever you consume uh, has to uh, like uh, come back to the system and uh, that is the equally like uh, the equal energy or equal resources needed to get it back to the system but unfortunately that priority is not given or you can say that i'll i'll say that it is zero priority for solid waste management when it comes uh, uh, to solid waste management if you look at the budgets part Uh, of the cities or of the governments or the kind of programs which we have right now uh, it is not that priority see if you look at uh, uh, the process the entire process like after consumption like post consumption the materials has to be collected and that has to be uh, transported to a place and it has to be sorted pre processed and it has to be 
linked to the, the to the uh, end uh, end products or it has to go to the the recycling centers or refurbishing centers things like that so that actually constitutes more than i think 70% of the whole process of solid waste management and you just look at uh, that area and what is the contribution of our governments or as taxpayers money where it goes so like priority is always like you can actually measure it with where the money goes so these days, like with the kind of what you call such Bharat, uh, the program, uh, the government decides that, okay, we are going to take solid waste management as a kind of a priority after sanitation. And uh, so there are big budgets. So there is big money coming into the, uh, in the process. But where is this money going like that? This is not for the kind of 70% of work, but it ends up at the places where the infrastructure, big infrastructure comes up. And there are a, like a kind of a new uh, stakeholders, new ecosystem. And so the entire money is pumping in to create a new ecosystem or a kind of a new uh, stakeholder group, like the, the corporates who are coming in uh, in the cloud of consultants uh, uh, or the, uh, the, the technology uh, providers, technology vendors, and comes the, the, the giants who goes with the centralized waste management plants like waste energy or uh, things like that. So the money is actually going there and not on the other side. And where uh, what is happening on the other side, it is the, the waste pickers, the waste pickers who are doing that work. And often in, in all the kind of formal meeting, uh, the governments have like, they just say that, okay, these people are the environmentalists because they save energy, they save resources for the nature, things like that. But apart from those words, uh, it's a hollow words, there is nothing concrete for them and uh, uh, and we, when we talk about the integration of uh, waste pickers into solid waste management it is there in the rules but it doesn't happen and wherever it happened to an extent it is primarily because of that organized efforts of uh, uh, waste picker groups uh, or the, the kind of association and other parts of the country it is not happening it is not happening one because they they always claim that, okay, we don't have register, right? Like it is very difficult to have the names of waste pickers in a city. And it is not complete. We are not getting the, 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 uh, the names or we cannot register them. There are so much of things. See, the problem is that like you just go to any city in India, you just ask for a tax register, their commercial tax register uh, for the shops. It is, ne it is never complete. Even it doesn't cover, I think uh, the maximum they may be covering 70%, 30% of shops and other things are still out. It is not even in their register, but still they are managing, right? So you cannot wait to like get the 100% coverage of uh, waste picker registration to get them integrated. It's like a kind of a lame excuse to, uh, to keep them out because see why uh, waste picker is again, like uh, I, I just want to link it to what uh, Dhanu said. See, this is poverty, absolute poverty. This is a scenario of urban poverty, like with the kind of urbanization happening, all their trickle-down theories fail, and you still have people who have absolute poverty in metro cities where the money is rolling out, but that money is not reaching these people, and that is why they are available to uh, av available for these kind of low-paid, like low-paid jobs. So, waste picking is happening just because it is low paid jobs and uh, still people have that kind of an absolute poverty that is why they are it's they're compelled to work for it right so and you, you see more uh, women and children are engaged in this process because they are cheap labor so in a way the governments are utilizing taxpayers money to subsidize corporates and their contracts or consultants and these poor waste pickers and waste pickers they are subsidizing their lives to ensure cleaner cities. So this, this is the kind of a gap which we have right now in India. So you go to any cities, this is the reality. Uh, like uh, a government have no problem assigning a contract to allot a land for zero uh, lease amount uh, in the name of a waste management plant. But they have n number of uh, complaints against waste picker groups to allot, uh, say, um, thousand square feet of space for storing their materials, but they don't want to see them uh, storing materials or accumulating materials for sorting and uh, linking it to the recyclers within the city. 
so this is a kind of a reality so the people who are working on solve like the solution part of the the solid waste or not just a solid waste management it is all about resource use and management one they are not getting money and two they are not respected and they are not recognized and they are not visible so this is a kind of a reality in this country though our policy makers and consultants are going around and then coming up with reports saying that okay this is uh, we need to like we let us give them id cards uh, let us give them some insurance coverages this is not going to solve the issue unless you for example like uh, in kerala where i live the kind of subsidies given to the the citizens for composting for example in household level composting the subsidies for some equipment it is up to 90% think about a composting equipment which costs something around 1000 rupees you are getting 900 rupees as subsidy or a, a, a compost bin which is around uh, 2400 uh, rupees it is get you are getting it for absolutely free like so government have that much money but and it is covering only organic waste management part so they have money they can subsidize citizens but they cannot pay the right amount to the waste pickers so whenever it comes to the waste pickers uh, like i have seen that many times whenever there is a kind of a conference or a kind of a meeting uh, or a discussion on waste pickers engaging waste pickers in waste management most of the civil service officers uh, are like they are uh, or they have the kind of obsession of using this uh, terminology uh, waste is wealth and uh, uh, you like uh, you can make uh, wealth out of waste so whenever it comes for a payment about like a pay, paying uh, waste pickers for the door to door collection or sorting or processing they said no no you just take the waste and uh, you take the money you sell it and you you make the money there is enough money or you can also pay us back so this is a question like they are just asking these waste pickers okay you just start collecting the waste but you tell us how much you are going to pay the city government like if you are willing to pay per kilogram something but these the same government uh, like they have no problem in paying huge tipping fees for the contractors who are just taking waste to a dump site so this is a kind of a, uh, an issue which we see on a day to day basis so there is money there is money spending happening so when you say like uh, this is our priority the waste management is our priority and we are spending money on that and you just look at where the money goes it goes to the organized uh, like uh, the what you call the so uh, the consultants or the companies or the contractors they are siphoning the money out and people who are doing the 70% of the way, like or maybe more than 70% of the waste management program are uh, they are asked to leave on uh, the income they are getting from the that base so that is a one the, the first part the second part is that with the new frameworks on on solid waste management of with the kind of a new rules uh, this i have already created like they they are creating new stakeholders see one you are telling them to okay you make your money from selling your waste and we are not going to pay you and at the same time they are creating new stakeholders like uh, pros like uh, the producer responsible organizations or other groups so they just uh, like, like uh, coming into the uh, space especially in uh, in uh, larger towns like metro cities and they are competing for materials with waste pickers so they get the material like the valuable material and they are making money like they are making money and they are getting not just uh, money from the sales but they are also getting subsidy supports in terms of csr funds or something else or or corporate uh, fund or any uh, like a sponsorships things like that so they are also there so now uh, you are again like uh, exploiting the waste pickers like uh, they are, you, you are in the field and the, like uh, I, in the first presentation uh, uh, pinky was mentioning about this middle class uh, the new middle class uh, charity or the kind of a conscience they with that they start uh, lots of thing like the major thing is a clean up so they just want to clean up they want cleaner cities they want to clean up so you engage some volunteers collect all the waste and dump it somewhere so that's it and uh, uh, for them it is they are satisfied and these days uh, uh, they have come up with uh, the, these kind of uh, what they call organizations have come up with uh, apps mobile apps so you can just uh, give them a call or you just uh, record uh, say that okay we got this much uh, plastics or things like that they are 
uh, people will come to your doorstep and pick it and then they will send it for recycling. They claim that they are sending it for recycling, but they are just you know, going and taking, getting it back to the uh, waste picker. So some, sometime it may be getting dumped. So that's what we see. So all the, uh, and even like, for example, uh, recently like uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Big Bazaar, the Big Bazaar chain, they used to have a kind of a process of, they call, call it as a kind of a recycling. And what they used to do is that they just asked these people, okay, you bring back whatever uh, waste in your house, whether plastics or cloths or chapels or bags, you bring it here and you will get discount coupon so that you can buy more. You buy more and you create more waste. So what happens is that people who used to just throw it out or who used to give it for free to the local, uh, the waste picker or the waste trader, uh, all the entire material has gone to these shops and they use it as a kind of an opportunity to increase their sales and whatever they collect, they send it to cement kilns or they just dumped it outside outside the city. So that's also happened. So these kind of new charity or the recycle mantra kind of campaigns are also actually taking away materials uh, which can support and like it's not, they can add some money to the, uh, to the kitty of uh, the waste picker uh, economy. So that is also being taken away so that all these frameworks, all these new setups, institutional mechanisms, uh, uh, and for example, like uh, Coca-Cola is right now uh, campaigning in India with uh, UNDP to set up material recovery facilities, resource recovery centers for cities so that they can have better waste management system where plastics can be recovered. But when they create this infrastructure, they are ensuring that that infrastructure is managed not by the waste pickers, but it is by either by governments or by the new social entrepreneurs or the startups. Uh, so this is something uh, happening around like, uh, that's what I see in Kerala. It is with the government, Kerala government company is managing all this. So again, the materials are like, uh, so like away from, away from waste because and uh, now, uh, but again, you don't have money to like, you don't have money to spend on uh, the waste because who are still managing the material. And uh, we are actually thinking about how to manage waste pickers, how to get them registered. See, this is a kind of the, the kind of an issue. Like, why, are, why do you want to manage waste pickers? See, they, they have that capability. You just facilitate, you just build that capacity, you just facilitate and you help them to build their own enterprises and uh, give them that kind of a recognition so that they can manage everything. See, they, they can manage. They are now they are managing only a part of the, the process and you just give that uh, full access to them and they can manage. But the problem is that the government always want to or the society always want to manage the waste pickers to manage waste. See, <laughs> this is the kind of a wrong uh, perception where on, on waste management. The people who knows waste management, like there is no problem in signing a contract with a, now a company which have zero experience in waste management. Like, for example, you just look at all these waste to energy companies coming to this country. Like recently, the government of Kerala have signed contract with a company uh, on uh, waste to energy project. And when I checked, the company has zero experience in waste management. But the same government have problem with uh, uh, signing a, doc a, a contract or even appointing or even uh, uh, authorizing a, a waste picker to do uh, a waste picker collective or a waste picker society to do waste management uh, in an area. Uh, who have at least uh, a minimum of uh, three or four decades of experience. So this is a kind of a, an issue which we have right now. And we all are looking at that as smart cities, smart bins, uh, smart transportation, smart uh, what, everything. Now AI, AI is there. AI is or artificial intelligence. We are bringing in artificial intelligence in uh, waste collection, uh, sorting, things like that. Where are we going? <laughs> like so everything in a faster pace with this kind of urbanization we are going with all these things but when you think about all these kind of uh, smart things don't we want these people to be smart like are we going to keep them uh, in the slums to work uh, at the this kind of a very like uh, the, uh, the 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 marginal wages like Dunu was mentioning about the minimum wages see he, the money they are getting is even not close to minimum minimum wages at times and whenever there is a kind of a fluctuations in the market, they are at loss, like what that we have seen during the COVID and uh, in their scenario. And whenever the uh, petroleum price uh, fluctuates, this is the same. The, the scenario is also same. And they have to compete with many market factors. So I think uh, 
you cannot keep them as face pickers for long and that is not actually fit for any kind of a smart economy or a smart community or even a cultured community i think that is time for us to redefine their roles uh, they need recognition and they their status has to be changed see they are managers they are environmental managers and environmental managers need more access to the process more access to the policy uh, discussion forums and uh, their voice has to be there and they should have that ownership like we we have to create like we have to facilitate for uh, uh, like uh, spaces where they can uh, occupy and they can uh, do the complete uh, uh, process instead of just going like the the privilege or the the priority should be given to the the waste picker groups like for example if you look at the land reforms act see the people who are living in that land and working in the land for long time they got the title so uh, in in the in similar similarly uh, the people who have that experience of waste manage uh, waste uh, manage manage managing the waste or managing the materials or, or running the recycling economy or saving the resources they should be given that right and and any anyone outside coming into play uh, like uh, who want to play on this they have to get that a right at a remuneration from them like they cannot just uh, get it as a kind of a free it should not be free. like you don't allow anyone else to come into like if you, you just check with any other sector uh, economic sector you don't allow other people to come into that sector and uh, take their money so i think uh, this is time for us to think about uh, or to create systems or create uh, programs to change the status like they has they have to be more technical people they have to be more uh, Uh, like a managerial role they have to be more like a, a, a entrepreneurs who are are doing business they are doing business and to ensure that the money the true money is going there like it is not uh, that, that there should be some subscription fees either the subscription fee should go directly from the consumers or from the corporates or it the government has to give it out from the the tax money see they are getting that tax so they have to send it from the tax money and you cannot no longer we cannot afford to subsidize these poor people to provide this kind of a, uh, a kind of a noble uh, work uh, what they are doing for our society and for our future so that's what uh, uh, my thoughts here and i'm just uh, stopping it here thank you thank you so much shivu uh, i'll allow joanna to give us summary in hindi and then we can proceed yeah शिबु जी ने जो आगे हमारे बहुत सारे साथियों ने जो बातचीत रखी उसको उसको थोड़ी सी और खोलकर उस पर बातचीत करने की कोशिश की उन्होंने जो बात कही कि जो टैक्स भरा जाता है उसका पैसा अब कहाँ जा रहा है तो उनका कहना यही है कि ये पैसा जो है वो एक नया पूरा ढांचा खड़ा करने की और जा रहा है जिसमें अः शिक्षित पढ़े लिखे जो टेक्नोलॉजी कंसल्टेंट्स है उनको ये सारा पैसा जा रहा है और किसी भी रूप से जो कूड़ा इकट्ठा करने वाले जो मजदूर है उनकी अः उनके उनके विकास के लिए या उनको ये पूरे सिस्टम में समावेश करने के लिए कोई भी प्रक्रिया नहीं हो रही है दूसरा उनका ये भी कहना है कि जबकि बहुत सारी नीतियों ने समावेशीकरण की बात की है एकीकरण की बात की है उसी और दूसरी तरफ ये पूरा एक इकोसिस्टम ऐसा एक नए हितग्राहियों का एक इकोसिस्टम खड़ा कर रहे हैं जो एक्सपर्ट्स है जो टेक्नोलॉजी को इस्तेमाल कूड़े को किस तरीके से कूड़े व्यवस्थापन में से जुड़ी हुई सभी एक्सपर्ट्स को का समावेशीकरण हो रहा है जिस और ज्यादा से ज्यादा जो टैक्स पेयर्स का पैसा है वो उस तरफ जा रहा है उन्होंने एक चीज ये भी कही कि रजिस्ट्रेशन पर बहुत जोर दिया जाता है कि रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं हो पा रहा है क्योंकि हम हम लोगों को चिन्हित नहीं कर पा रहे हैं उन्होंने टैक्स पेयर्स रजिस्टर की बात टैक्स रजिस्टर की बात की कि जहाँ पर पूरी तरीके से सभी लोगों का समावेश उसमें नहीं हो पाया है तो हम क्यों इंतजार कर रहे हैं कि शत प्रतिशत पंजीयन हो और तभी जाकर के सभी लोगों का समावेशीकरण होगा उसका हम हम उस 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 वक्त तक क्यों इंतजार कर रहे हैं और रजिस्ट्रेशन को हम क्यों ज्यादा से ज्यादा 
बढ़ाने की कोशिश नहीं कर रहे हैं और उनका ये भी कहना है कि आ, ये सारा जो आ, पूरा इकट्ठा करने का जो पूरा काम है वो इतना आ, कम लो इनकम लो पेड जॉब्स है और जिसमें ज्यादा से ज्यादा बच्चे और महिलाओं महिलाएं शामिल हैं और जब एक तरफ सरकार अपना सारे टैक्स पेयर का पैसा वाइस वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट में लगा रही है और दूसरी तरफ यहाँ पर मिनिमम वेज भी नहीं मिल रहा है जो इसमें जुड़ी हुई है उनका एक ये भी कहना है कि सरकार की मंशा ही नहीं है कि किसी भी तरीके से जो पूरा इकट्ठा करने वाले कर्मचारी है उन वो इस पूरे सिस्टम में आए वो आ, अपने हक मांगे वो एक ऑन्टरप्रनर्स बने या उसको पूरा मैनेजमेंट करने का जो पूरा आ, आ, उनके हाथों में आए उस तरफ किसी भी नीति का रुख नहीं है उनका ये कहना है कि एक तरफ जब सब्सिडी दी जाती है कि जो जो इंडस्ट्रीज है अगर वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट में काम कर रहे हैं दूसरी तरफ जो कूड़ा उठाने वाले व्यक्ति को आ, आ, कहा जाता है कि आप सिर्फ एक जगह से दूसरी जगह पर उसको रख दीजिए और उसमें उसको आप बेचकर अपना पैसा बना सकते हैं अंत में उनका यही कहना है कि आ, हमें इस इस हमें प्रयास ये करना चाहिए कि आ, किस तरीके से ज्यादा से ज्यादा जो पूरा इकट्ठा करने वाले कर्मचारी हैं उनको केंद्र में लाया जाए उनको शिक्षित किया जाए या उनको आ, आ, इस तरीके से ट्रेनिंग एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग उनका ये हो कि वो आ, इस पूरे सिस्टम को आ, अपने हिसाब से चले क्योंकि वो खुद जानते हैं कि ये आ, इसको किस तरीके से मैनेज किया जा सकता है तो हमें उस ओर जाने का एक प्रयास करने की जरूरत है और ये बहुत सारे जो न, एक पूरा नया दौर चल रहा है कि जिसमें बड़े बड़ी कंपनियां हैं या नए नए बिजनेस मॉडल्स आ रहे हैं कूड़े को कूड़े व्यवस्थापन में उसको किस तरीके से चैलेंज करना है उस पर हमें ज्यादा जोर देने की जरूरत है थैंक यू लुमना थैंक्स सो आई थिंक शिबु ब्रॉट अप अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट टू बिगिन विद सो दिस होल डिस्कशन टुडे वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट लोकेटिंग वेस बिकॉज़ uh and all the speakers kind of looked at it uh, from different perspectives uh, we looked at locating waste pickers in policy how there's been some at least verbal recognition uh but perhaps that's a case of good uh verbalization but not true intent like mr roy was talking about and shibu brought up another dimension of this is follow the money to actually find where the priorities really lie and you see that waste pickers are a group of workers who are actually subsidizing waste management uh, through their own activity and there are still issues of uh, uh, fair compensation welfare safety security which aren't addressed and still their baseline work does actually subsidize waste management in general but still money is never challenged uh, channeled to waste pickers even though everyone is happy to say let's incorporate let's recognize um and then it actually uses the idea of wealth from waste to actually keep waste pickers out out of actually receiving the benefits that are uh, one would argue rightfully owed to waste pickers and there's a very interesting dynamic of barriers to entry to the informal sector to actually prove uh, that they are part of this sector versus the ease with which private players uh, like shibu said without experience are able to put crores and crores into uh environmentally and financially um uh, unsound solutions like waste to energy where governments are agreeing to that at the drop of a hat whereas uh, like mr roy was saying proving citizenship where you are actually putting such a high bar on the people who are actually in the sector actually taking it upon themselves subsidizing um waste management to prove uh, that they are part of this sector and that at least not to be displaced but at most to actually get uh, their dues from all of this investment in the waste sector very interesting points i think from everyone that brought these things together and one more interesting dynamic of obviously new entities in waste but also how that interest in sustainability and waste could actually cause waste to be siphoned away from waste because and the missing perspective of waste workers in the sustainability 
uh, discussion even leads environmentally conscious citizens who are excited by the idea of uh, buying back and giving uh, their washed plastic bags back to corporations are actually siphoning waste away from waste pickers and that doesn't feature too much in the uh, pure environment and sustainability uh, conversations. All of these very interesting ideas, but I'll keep the floor open to speakers and anyone who'd like to comment um, or add uh, to the discussion. If you'd like to speak, uh, please raise your hand and I can ask you to unmute and ask a question. If no one has a question, I have a question for Mr. Roy, actually. Uh, so I found many of the ideas uh, very interesting. Actually, I'll just let Nalini speak because I've been speaking a lot. Nalini, go ahead. No, 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 you please go ahead after that. Sure. Uh, I actually wanted to ask how uh, one would go about uh, reclaiming more than just small demarcated spaces. So I think the idea of space is very important. Even Shibu raised it. Um, everyone is interested in recycling, but even here in Pune with KKP and Swatch, everyone likes the idea of recycling, but nobody likes the idea of a waste picker sitting in their lane and sorting through waste. Um, and so how would we really go about reclaiming space in such an ambitious way is something I wanted to get uh, your thoughts on. Okay, uh, let me... There are probably two dimensions to what you are saying. The first dimension is just focusing on waste. And if you take my first point, that waste pickers should refuse to collect waste. Uh, they should say, we will not take your waste. We will take your scrap. That's a very different point, which means that the householder who creates the waste or the office, or the factory will be forced to deal with waste, but they will give their scrap to the scrap dealer. That I think is a different way of looking at why and at asking the question, why is the society producing waste in the first place? It should not. The packaging that we use is totally unnecessary. Why are we using it at all? And why is there is entering the waste stream? Why are so many plastics being produced? They can be easily replaced by other materials if they are at all necessary, that is. So I think this transition from waste to scrap is a very important part of it. It then changes the dimension of space, one. The second point that I would like, and that's my, that was my last point, that if we get out of this world of waste and we talk of working people in the city, then actually you don't claim individual spaces. You claim the entire city. You say, this is our city. We will plan it. It's ludicrous to say that a policymaker who has never touched waste can make policy for waste. It's idiotic. He is not skilled. He's not competent. It's the waste manager or the scrap dealer who really knows what to do with waste. So this is a, a way of, I think, avoid answering a lot of these other questions that right? we can change possibly our perspective. Uh, Nalini, uh, you can just unmute and ask your question. Go ahead. Um, it's not a question. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Okay. So I just, uh, I'm just coming back from MOEF meeting uh, uh, two days. And uh, one of the things uh, we talked about is why waste pickers are not uh, included at all in the EPR and then all that. So basically what uh, Dunu Roy uh, was talking about um, was that, um, you know, trickle down, trickle down effect. We just as the um, recyclers and the waste pickers automatically come in. So this kind of looking at waste as a science has also become a challenge for us um, to do it. So what uh, Dunu suggested as two choices, 
I think we are already in the second choice. Actually, the first choice, I think, uh, has has moved away with uh, Swachh Bharat coming in and all that. We are already in the second phase. So, but the thing to be, uh, you know, fair also, there is no expectation that organizations should organize waste picker to ask, but there is no such organization that can organize everybody in the country. That should be the urban uh, development department and uh, NULM's job to organize waste pickers and bring them on board. So that is how I would say the system change is required, but we are already in second phase of adjusting to the system that, that have come and how we adjust into that, that kind of a thing. So, and also waste pickers have lost a lot of jobs, started looking at other um, choices that they have to get into and which is worse than that. I don't believe waste pickers were unhappy and getting less money. Actually, waste pickers were making more money. Indoor, they put them into door-to-door -door collection and then gave a, a you know minimum wage, which is 6,000. But they were making 12 to 13,000 when, when they were waste picker and they, on their own. So just looking at this whole thing as a um, nine to five job or eight hours job, is actually not what we are asking. What we are asking is look at different kinds of job possibilities, including the entrepreneurs. Why can't waste picker themselves become the company rather than uh, being part of the company? I just wanted to share that. Yeah, it, it again goes back to like what Pinky was saying about formalizing is looked at in a very traditional way of contract workers and then you have a nine to five job, but you lose out the flexibility of this because who have always worked independently and as entrepreneurs. It's even a big challenge for organizing, obviously, because people are working individually and you're not workers in a company, right? Where you see everyone in the same floor, factory floor working with you. So there's so many added dimensions to all of this and flexibility, especially with the gendered aspect of this sector is very huge for uh, women to have flexibility at work, even when we have opportunities for more formal work uh, for even children of waste pickers who sometimes help out um, their mothers, this aspect of flexibility in timings and flexibility of work is a major issue over and above just the minimum wage aspect, which is really important and really quite overlooked, especially when you're talking about transitioning those workers from this kind of sector into what others would think at a glance is good, formal, fair terms of work and uh, all of that. So that aspect is definitely very important. And obviously the aspect of formal work becoming more male dominated very quickly once the focus shifts to productivity. Um, Shashi, your hand was raised uh, right after Nalini, go ahead. <laughs> मुझे बस दोनों सर से बस एक बात करना है हाँ बोलिए शशि जैसे जो 2016 पे लॉ नहीं है रूल है तो रूल और लॉ में जो है अंतर होता है और इंटरेस्टिंग ये है कि जो लॉ रूल जो बने हमारे देश में जिन्हें इंप्लीमेंट करना है वो उसके हिस्सा नहीं है तो चूंकि ये मैं इसलिए कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि अर्बन डेवलपमेंट डिपार्टमेंट या मिनिस्ट्री इस फॉर्मेशन का पार्ट नहीं रहा लेकिन उसी को इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो एक तो ये बहुत गैप मुझे दिखता है और चूंकि एक्ट होगा बनेगा तो डेफिनेटली ये सबके लिए मैंडेटरी होगा रूल है तो अभी आप चाहें तो करें या चाहे तो ना करें ये आपके ऊपर है इसीलिए उनको दिया गया कि आप बाई रूल बनाइए और बाई रूल बनाइए तो बाई रूल जिसे आपको उदाहरण के तौर पर दिल्ली को हाई कोर्ट का जो है वो लेना पड़ा ऑर्डर लेना पड़ा कि आप बाई रूल आपने क्यों नहीं बनाया अभी तक तो उन्होंने जो बाई रूल बनाया है उनको शायद मालूम नहीं है क्या है आइडिया नहीं है जो लोग उसके मेम्बर रहे हैं उन्होंने जो है ज्यादातर जो है चीजें जो है रूल के में से ले करके और एक सर्विस चार्ज के कंपोनेंट को उन्होंने जोड़ दिया बस इतना ही किया और कुछ किया नहीं उस बाई रूल में बाई रूल का मतलब कि एक्शन प्लान बनाना है कि किसको आपको शामिल करना है कैसे करना है वो सब चीजें उन्होंने हटा दिया कुछ भी नहीं उस चर्चा ही नहीं लाया उसको तो मेरा बस दोनों सर से ये सवाल है कि क्या हम लोगों को ठीक है कि हम लोग उसको नए उसमें देखना चाहिए लेकिन क्या हम लोगों को एक्ट के बारे में भी जरूरत है अभी इस पर बात करने की या नहीं 
क्या होना चाहिए मिस्टर रॉय गो हेड यू कैन अनम्यूट एंड एड्रेस हाँ तो पहले शशि का सवाल कि एक्ट और रूल में जाने की जरूरत है कि नहीं हाँ जरूर जाने की जरूरत है आ, उसमें स्टार्ट माय वीडियो अच्छा हाँ जाने की जरूरत है क्योंकि होता क्या है अक्सर एक्ट बड़ी खूबसूरती से लिखा जाता है लेकिन जब बाय लॉज बनते हैं और रूल्स बनते हैं तो फैसला लेने का अधिकार वो किसी अफसर को दे दिया जाता है किसी कमेटी को दे दिया जाता है अगर आपका विवाद है तो विवाद को वो करने के लिए विवाद को ठीक करने के लिए या सुधारने के लिए किसी उच्च अधिकारी को सौंप दिया जाता है तो हो सकता है कि एक्ट बनाने में लोगों की थोड़ी बहुत प्रतिभागिता रहे कुछ भागीदारी रहे कि एक्ट बनाते वक्त बुला लिया कुछ चंद उनके नुमाइंदों को कि भाई तुम भी अपनी बात कह दो लेकिन रूल का मतलब होता है फैसला कौन ले इसलिए रूल में जाने की बहुत जरूरत है और ये कहने की अगर इसमें ही सीमित रहना है कि ये कहने की कि रूल में फैसला लेने का हक भी लोगों का होना चाहिए ये नहीं कि कोई उच्च अधिकारी इस पे फैसला ले ये मुझे समझ में आता है ये दूसरा एंड आई जस्ट वांटेड टू क्विकली रिस्पॉन्ड टू नलिनीज पॉइंट अबाउट वेस्ट बिकॉज शुड बी अलाउड टू फॉर्म दैट कंपनीज इट्स अ गुड आइडिया बट माय पॉइंट इज दैट द मोमेंट दे फॉर्म अ कंपनी in this structure this given economic structure that company will have to compete with other companies there will be no difference between a waste picker company and that company this is precisely the premise on the basis of which the sugar mills were made at one time that there would be cooperative sugar mills they all gave rise to sugar barons so the moment you do a waste picker company they're going to give rise to to waste picker barons because that is the nature of the system and until we address the systemic issues which we keep avoiding because we say who's going to do it and the suggestion that the ministry is going to do it is ridiculous to my mind because the ministry i mean you must understand this government in 1993 this government meaning these series of government in 1993 clearly declared that the business of government is to act as a steward for the investor now how much more pro corporate can you get so to expect that this government is going to mobilize the workmen or the people is uh, to my mind very very far fetched the only way it will happen is when you change the government at least that's the logical thank you uh, nalini would you like to respond or if anyone else has to speak i don't see a hand raised if there are no more questions i'll allow all of the speakers uh, to give concluding remarks uh, on the session and we'll go in the same order Uh, that please yeah nalin okay uh we can just continue pinky you can take a few minutes to give your concluding remarks i think nalini is on mute yeah nalini are you trying to speak no 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 okay <laughs> okay i think in conclusion all i need to say is because the topic has is locating waste picker uh, waste workers in um, in whatever is happening whether it is sdgs or rapid urbanization or like we can see with the uh, the way uh, ulbs are moving 
uh, in the race for being the cleaner city. Some do care, some do not care. Uh, I, I think the whole idea, I mean, like, like what Dinu said, I think um, uh, what is important is to look at identity based on work. And this is something that we've also been advocating for. And that's, I think, not just we in terms of uh, we as in Hasrudala, but also we as in uh, whether it is uh, Swatch KKPKP or whether it is Chintan or whether it is SMS or anybody, uh, any of the other, other organizations from the Alliance of Waste, because I think that was the reason why occupational ID cards became the norm. But having said that, just by possessing occupational ID cards, again, with occupational ID cards, there is no standards, right? Each, um, uh, I mean, each ULB has their own framework of occupational ID card. There's no consistency, there is no database. I mean, the only one database that we had was of 2017 or 18, where there were some 86,000 base pickers registered. Again, when you look at Swatch Bharat ranking in terms of the, the percentage of ULBs uh, integrating base pickers as opposed to the database, there is, there is absolutely a gray area. So in, for instance, if Bangalore has, has given a 10 year um, ID card validity, uh, what happens now that we finish 10 years? I mean, what's the next process? How do you identify? How do you track? Because maybe some of them are not waste pickers, but have moved up the ladder because of X, Y, Z conditions, or some people would have moved because of COVID and or demonetization and things like that. So I think that system is, is definitely lacking. The second, I mean, so, so uh, identity as um, as a space is very important, and I think Shibu also raised a very important point on the fact that now with the new policies, whether it is PWM rules or whether it is EPR rules, there is definitely scope for new stakeholders. And even if you look at EPR uh, framework, it allows for the producers, importers, brand owners to actually step up collection or create new collection systems. But having but but just doing that. Will it solve the problem? No, because if you don't map the existing re, uh, recycling infrastructure in the city, uh, you're not going to be really able to solve the problem. It's just going to be uh, just going to be a paper trail or a paper tiger and nothing beyond that. So I think there is, and even if you look at SDG framework, while the SDG framework is is comprehensive and looks at the larger picture, I think what we need to do. Um, is as allies of, of waste pickers and informal waste workers in the whole this thing is to relook at how do you, how are you actually, what is happening in each state or each city or each ULP or each corporation or each Gram Panchayat about waste pickers? Because there is clearly, um, uh, so you, you can't just tick box and say, yes, we have trained waste pickers, but you have not identified waste pickers or you've not looked at integration or inclusion of waste pickers. You're not respecting the formal boundaries. You're just creating new markets like what Shibu rightly pointed out. So I think there needs to be coming together. And if you're really looking at SDG as, 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 your, um, as, as, as something that you would want to uh, you know, benchmark or look at it, I think each of these 17 SDGs need to be mapped. If you're looking at no poverty you're looking at goal 17 which is partnership how are the ulbs actually looking at partnerships and there has to be metrics for each of these things because most waste pickers are also look when you look at housing for that matter how are you looking at housing in a holistic manner are they still in informal settlements or have they been given even if they've been given slum slum, slum housing slum boat constructed housing or uh, affordable housing what are the facilities in it? Because I remember very clearly when I looked at the indoor um, settlement, um, uh, rehabilitation uh, slum colony, the, there were no basic amenities. I mean, if you, if you jumped, if you, there were windows broken, there was no proper water, water, sand, water facility, the outside area had slush around. So what are we really talking about? I mean, if you have to really locate and you have to really, and if you're talking about moving, leaving no one behind, what are we actually talking? And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicky. That was extremely valuable. Um, I'll allow the next speaker, uh, Dr. Sinhag, you can share your concluding remarks. Dr. Sinha, I think he may have dropped off the call. So I'll allow Mr. Roy to give concluding remarks. 
<laughs> there's no real conclusion to this <laughs> but i will just uh, you know enunciate a principle of science it's a very principle principle agar vyavastha khatarnak hai to aap aadmi ko surakshit nahi karte aap vyavastha ko badalte hain i think that is the basic principle we are all describing a system that is so dangerous so threatening nothing gets implemented it's so unsafe it's so insecure in such a system the principle is not that you try and make the person working in the system safer but uh, you change the system you can't have a uh, so you, the earlier speaker was talking about a polluted sewer into which people enter and die you don't encumber the person entering that hole in hell with masks and gloves or uske upar aur zyada chadhava aap pehna do chashma de do peeth mein oxygen tank de do aur kaho ki aap ja ke kaam karo it is not logical it is not rational you change the system you change that hell hole and i think this is exactly what this whole discussion should be about how do we change the system rather than trying to say figure out the ways you know how to get acts uh, implemented how to get the rules framed how to get the organizations accepted by the ulb i mean i find it ludicrous really strange i'm just think about it that i am asking government to give me an identity when the actual question should be who is government what is your identity it's a very strange logic uh, that we are applying no so i'll just end with that thank you so much uh, mr ai shubhu i think uh, not much to uh, uh, second if i can like like the dulu said there is no conclusion at all because these uh, things has to be uh, discussed in in length uh, i think uh, uh, i think we need to uh, think about like uh, discuss about talk about or uh, about more about the change uh, the the current uh, scenario is that the central government is trying to get into the spaces of state governments by dictating what they have to do like for example like if you look at waste management it is a state subject and with the rules like actually we need, we don't need these kind of rules we need only that uh, epa is there like you should not pollute your air you should not pollute the water or land and uh, the entire uh, structure has to be made or customly made with the uh, the geographical and cultural scenario right now we have something uh, which is uh, from kashmir to kanyakumari you have one uh, uh, structure is there one rule is there and it is you cannot like the people who are sitting in the plains dictating what the people in the mountains do or the coastal uh, plains has to do so and uh, and if you look at the, the entire process uh, the the major people like the the waste pickers or people associated with the process are not there so i think we need to change the so that the, so the system inherently there is a kind of a an issue or it's a, it's a failure and that's what we see and uh, it is uh, the it is getting worsened with the kind of what you call insecurity feeling of the officials uh, uh, who uh, do not even they do not trust themselves and they don't have that capacity or the courage uh, to to take risk or take to to go for a new newer systems and they just want to stick to this kind of very ridiculous uh, rules also creating a problem so what i think the what we need is that we have to work together to remove these barriers uh, the 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 things the systems the the rules or even uh, the kind of ap- approach or even including the mentality of a public uh, towards uh, the entire process so that the real people can come into the space take their space and uh, they can work and they can create and uh, in, a, in a respectable way and uh, we cannot uh like uh, expect them to be on on like a continuous a kind of a people scavenging in waste 
that is that is not not at all solution and we need to uh, define the the exit point and we need to define the the processes uh, redefine the processes so that it it ensures a kind of a circular uh, uh, system and uh, again when when it comes on that economic benefits i think all these economic benefits on when we talk about uh, uh, waste pickers engaging in waste management yes they are getting money but uh, you just look where they are getting money they are getting money when they are working in larger cities in smaller towns it is the complete scene, uh, scene is different like you don't even uh, find money to uh, like a survey a day so so that there are two sides so in in those conditions how uh, the system can support how people can support them in in uh, bridging that gap we we often hear about uh, viability gap funding and all these viability gap funding is going for the companies not for these people so there are some available resources available avenues like avenues are there but these are not being used and it is time for us to expose uh, what is happening in the system in the name of smart cities or in the name of uh, development or in the, in the name of sustainable development things like that and how it is hostile uh, to the people who are working on the, the kind of urban poor or this kind of uh, people who are working on waste so that is something which we need to do so that's it thank you thank you so much shivu i'll just try to summarize and add my two cents on this whole discussion uh, we spoke a lot about uh, locating waste because and several different perspectives on that residents of waste because where they are physically where they work physically whether even those workspaces like landfills are recognized formally or not uh, their conditions of work locating waste because in policy and regulation uh, but also recognizing where its lip service and where that identification is done with um, ulterior motives of kind of uh, bringing more attention to that sector rather than to the workers themselves uh, locating waste because in the context of where money and investment flows so actually connecting that to the claims about uh, integration and inclusion locating waste because as workers uh in the broader context of the city and not just as people within the waste uh, sector locating them vis-a-vis -vis other sectors uh, uh, other stakeholders in this sector particularly private stakeholders and how the barriers of entry how the way that the governments view new private players versus existing informal sector the disproportionate burden of proof the disproportionate distribution of power and even distribution of resources as well as willingness to allocate resources to those stakeholders um within the sector is extremely important and skewed very much in favor of the more powered more private players rather than those who have been uh, invisible marginalized and actually subsidizing all of this uh, been environmental uh, workers all of these years Uh, also locate locating waste because within decision making uh, where there's such a big part of a system on the ground but have no way uh, no formal way to actually affect change to even determine the terms of inclusion so something like uh, including waste pickers that's in a lot of policy now what the terms of inclusion are and does it really take into account uh, the requirements of the people in that sector with all of the special uh, requirements especially given that it's gendered it tends to be of the most marginalized within cities and recognizing what levers are used against these workers to actually keep them out the burden of proof of actually identifying yourself as a waste picker putting that burden on an informal sector to formalize and organize before the government is willing to take action uh, to actually work with that sector Uh, is a very high bar and not one that's applied uh, fairly across uh, stakeholders within this sector uh, there's a huge imbalance of power and very little recognition of uh, the steps it would actually take to include waste workers um, and there is selective lip service being paid to inclusion where they are absent in something like epr which is much more focused on the resources and the wealth and is much more um, uh, towards private interest in the sector and not really even paying lip service to waste because anymore whereas when you're talking about waste management just the collection part you kind of push that onto these marginalized workers where you need to fill a labor gap without really adding much 
uh, to the people uh, in that sector. Uh, that's all from me. I'll hand it over to uh, Mira to conclude. Thank you so much, Lubna. I think that was a very good summary, actually. And overall, it was a very well-rounded session. And uh, I think uh, both all the speakers, in fact, also uh, complemented each other, but also challenged each other in uh, different ways. And I think that was interesting and uh, quite thought-provoking. Uh, and all the three sessions, in fact, one day, I mean, those of us who were part of uh, the three uh, sessions, we, we very clearly see uh, the continuum of some of the fundamental aspects that have been raised from the first session on uh, Swachh Bharat mission where the, the whole question of neglect of waste workers was uh, raised to the whole waste to energy question and the political economy of that whole, uh, these new developments. And today uh, today's session in the context of quote unquote rapid urbanization and uh, uh, sustainable development. And I think a lot of issues have been unpacked in these uh, uh, three sessions. Uh, and I mean, uh, as most of you have said, I think it is uh, probably it's both, you no know, one should also build on some of the gains of the the movement and the journeys that we've had so far in these sectors, but also without losing sight of the macro picture, especially in a world where, uh, I mean, these inequalities are becoming even more uh, stuck. So how do you locate the whole question of, uh, and as Dunu rightly says, not only waste workers, of course, waste workers, but the whole uh, informal sector working class and uh, reclaiming their right to the city and the right to uh, a really safe and sustainable ecology are, I think, very, uh, very significant and very fundamental questions. So, uh, and these sessions, I think also leave us with more questions than with, uh, and uh, ideas than with answers. So maybe we must continue these conversations in different ways. Bahut uh, bahut shukriya sabhi vaktaon ko, Pinky, Shibu, Dunu and uh, Dr. Swapan is not here, but uh, thanks to all the four speakers and thanks of course to Lubna. It was a bit of a last minute request and she uh, accepted to moderate the session. And I think it was done really, uh, uh, well, so thanks to you as well and to uh, all our speakers of the previous uh, sessions and uh, uh, to Shashi Bhai as well, who's been helping in co-curating uh, these uh, sessions over the past uh, three Sundays. Uh, next month, we are actually, some of us are meeting in Bhopal, so we would definitely want to uh, continue the conversation within uh, some of the other groups of NAPM as well and try and build collaborations with uh, waste pickers organizations, but also locate the whole question with the broader uh, uh, informal uh, working class struggle. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, thanks to all the audience who've been with us throughout. And we'll see you next week at 6 p.m. for another session of uh, Grounded Voices. Zindabad. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye.